the strangest personal electric vehicle we've ever tested. Today, we are going to do our full review video on this, the Extreme Bull K6. We've reviewed the previous version, the K5, and I called this 0% practical, 100% fun. Would you agree with that? Uh, I don't know. I, I really love this thing. I'd say this is my favorite seated rideable electric device. Since we still have a full charge, let's go find our uh, speed run area and do some speed run tests. Okay, here we are, our favorite speed run location. We're waiting for the road to clear. We're gonna get the satellite GPS on Andrew's helmet and we're gonna test the speed. What can we expect here? It's a 134 volt system with dual 3,500 watt motors. It's stated max speed is about 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles per hour. And we're gonna see if we can hit that. smoking holy cow that is a lot of fun and really stable at high speed i am surprised by this a lot of these like sitting rideable electric devices they're a little sketch hitting the high top speeds they don't feel as safe as this does uh draggy said i hit 60 miles per hour and i think this is the fastest zero to ten miles per hour that i've ever seen on an electric rideable device or pv holy shit. this thing is pretty crazy right here it said the zero to ten miles per hour was 1.02 seconds, 0 to 20 was 2.11 seconds, 0 to 30 was 3.14 seconds, and 0 to 40 was 4.24 seconds, 0 to 50 was 5.58 seconds, and the 0 to 60 was 11.67 seconds. This is fast. It said my quarter mile was 19.22 seconds. I can't even see what's going on the, on the display, but it is crazy. I'm almost positive this thing could go faster. Basically what I feel is when I hit 60 miles per hour, it kind of hits a wall and just kind of stops. At that point, it doesn't feel like it's shaking. It feels like it's just cruising along nice and smooth at 60 miles per hour. Yeah, and that's been my experience. We've been riding this a lot recently and at high speeds, you feel like you're going even faster just because you're so low to the ground. The stability is amazing. My wife, who hates riding these things, I'm always encouraging her to try to ride just a scooter or an e-bike and <laughs> she won't do it because she just doesn't feel safe. So I was able to convince my wife to get on this. She was zipping around the neighborhood. She just took off. I didn't even know where she went. She was having so much fun. I had to go track her down because I thought she'd gotten injured or hurt or something had gone wrong, but she was just having fun exploring the neighborhood. And that's because you feel so stable on this at slow and at high speeds. So it was really cool to see how fast Andrew was going. He just zips by. It's it's crazy how fast he's going on this and how fast he takes off on this. The other thing is, is even though it's pilling out, I was very surprised at that zero to 10 miles per hour speed. And it has something to do with me being low and my weight distributed over both tires. From the K5 to the K6, they've definitely made some upgrades in terms of the traction control. You're getting much better traction when you're accelerating. That was our speed run test. Incredibly fast, incredibly stable. Now it's my turn to give this a ride. Let's talk about the things that we like about it while we're riding too. The thing that I like, it's nice and smooth. Even though it goes 60 plus miles an hour, you don't have to go that fast. The throttle is very responsive, very easy to modulate. I wish I could see on the monitor or the screen here how fast I'm going, but the screen is, is pretty worthless. According to the EUC, with a display that's easier to read, we're going about 14 miles an hour. So easy to go at a nice, slow, consistent speed. But then if you want to go fast, you just kind of lean into it. You got to be a little careful when you grip that thing because it can want to pull out from underneath you. So just make sure that when you go to rip it, you kind of slowly pull it back or have your weight evenly distributed straight forward. Even though I was leaning forward trying to distribute my weight, I think I pulled on the throttle a little too hard and I could feel the, the rear tire sliding a little bit. Um, and then the other thing too is this is not the best condition road. There's cracks, potholes, you know, you lose a little bit of traction going over those things. But in general, very stable because you're so low to the ground. It feels like I'm in Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, where they're cruising around on those, uh, you know, going through the forest and cruising 
Cruz, I don't even know what those things are called, but that's what it feels like. <laughs> that's the one thing I do love about this is it's easy to correct yourself. So some of these things, as soon as you get all lopsided because you're so high up, it can be a little sketch, but because this is so low and even if it gets sideways on you, you can rebalance yourself and catch yourself so you don't eat it. Let's talk about the things that we love about this. They learn the mistakes from the K5. They've improved upon them. The quality overall, much better. So we got these motorcycle grade hydraulic brakes. I mean, you can see the fluid right here. It gives you the confidence to know that when you can go fast, you can also stop when you need to. Yeah, speaking about the reservoir on those brakes, when it came to us, the bolt on the brake line came undone and a little drop happened, so it created a bubble. I love these reservoirs because you don't need a brake bleed kit. You basically just need to take off the top, pump up the brake lever because the vacuum isn't there anymore because you removed the lid, which is right here. Yeah, so you take off this lid, pump the brakes, basically gets rid of the bubble, and then you can just put that back on so the vacuum is back in place. Easy to fix, where other types of PEV devices, if you have a bubble in the brake line, it can be a little bit painful and a little bit tedious. So this is nice that this has such a huge reservoir with extra hydraulic fluid. Not only are the brake levers excellent, the brakes itself are great. They're really thick rotors and the calipers are massive. Even though they're only two piston brakes, they work better than four piston brakes that we see on electric scooters. Yeah, the other nice thing is with this device is it's customizable to a certain extent. You can customize the extent that the brakes are operated to make the ergonomics better for your feel, for your hands. You can adjust the height of the handlebars. The pedals, they feel solid with the spikes. They fold in. I'm not quite sure if that really helps at all. You're not really decreasing your footprint all that much. The previous version, the seat was not comfortable at all. With this, I could see myself riding this long distances, whether or not I'd ride this 60 miles or 100 miles range, which is what this is advertised at. Uh, we're gonna need to uh, improve that a little bit for my butt and my back. And then this flag, I like that this is a nice touch that they're including this. You need something so that you can be visible. We're so low to the ground. It's so fast, it's so quiet. You need this flag so that people can see you coming, so that cars can know that you're there. And it was kind of cool that we got to join those recumbent cyclists. And all we saw from the grass right. were these flags. And it almost looked like there was a group ride with these K6s. We caught up with them. It wasn't a bunch of K6s. It was a bunch of people on these recumbent bikes, but we felt like we had found our people. With the twist throttle, it's a lot more ergonomic than what you see with a thumb or trigger throttle. And that's exactly how it should be because it's just like a motorcycle or an e-moped, a lot more ergonomic to twist rather than pulling or pushing on something. The heat sink is massive and exposed, which is perfect because you're just generating so much power that you need that heat dissipation. And while it's exposed, it's still protected from getting damaged because it's kind of within this cage area here. Motorcycle grade horn. <laughs> which you need because you're so low to the ground, it's very likely that someone's not gonna be able to see you when you're riding it. It's a really bright light. The beam is narrow, but it is very bright. The other great thing about the K6 is it's sold by Alien Rides and they offer extended warranty and some of the best servicing in the PEV game. We've met with the folks over at Alien Rides. We've ridden with them. Great guys, great setup. So you can have confidence knowing that you're gonna be taken care of if something were to go wrong with your ride. And last but not least is the looks of it. This thing is just almost comedic. When you're driving this down the road, people look over and there's a big old cheese and smile on their face. So I just love riding this because it brings joy to people as they see you riding it. It just looks so different from anything you've ever seen. So this is truly, a strange alien-like ride. All right, we're gonna keep riding. At our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about the K6. I will say, the other thing I like about this is the fact that you can go places that devices this fast and this powerful normally can't go, like a motorcycle, moped. You're not taking it on the sidewalk or on trails, and this can get away. Crying. This thing can really pick up speed. So much fun though, and just bring smiles to people's faces. We just passed a crowd up there and all of them were looking at us and gave us a thumbs up, but it's not perfect. There definitely is room for improvement. This is gonna be the first thing, the kickstand, right? So I put down the kickstand. It's, it's a slight angle. It seems like it's okay, right? It seems like it's okay. We seems like it's okay. And then eventually, slowly, it just kind of creeps and then it's gonna wanna fall. So I'm gonna hold on to it, right? It's not super stable. So I'm not like very trusting of that kickstand. The display, 
I had high hopes that this display was actually going to be somewhat decent. Andrew was skeptical. He thought it was going to be trash. Andrew won. The display is on. Yeah, let's show you some shadow of it. And even in the shade, it's hard to see it. For me, as soon as I saw it, it's the exact same thing that we see on all the other Bagode EUCs. They work fine at nighttime, but during the day, they're just awful. You can't see them. They flicker. Basically, it's the exact same display with some thicker acrylic over it. So it looks nicer, but still the same crappy display. We've talked glowingly about the ride and how stable it feels, how smooth it is, how powerful it is. The suspension though, it's okay. Going over bumps, going over cracks, it's not super comfortable. I wish the suspension was adjustable. The rear seat, it's adjustable, but it's a little loosey-goosey. So there's different settings where you can set the height. All right, so that's one. There's only there's just the two, two or three. I think there's a third one maybe. And that's... Oh no, yeah. Yeah, and speaking about this back seat rest, there's a light in here. And this light sucks as well. It looks cool, but you can't see it at all during the day. And even at nighttime, it's still not super bright. So it looks cool at night, but it would be nicer if they use brighter LEDs. Yeah, that, that is basically your brake light and it does not show up during the day. So really tough, especially if you're in traffic and you're going 60 and you need a brake, people can't tell that you're braking just based off of that brake light, just because it's so dim. And touching upon that brake light, it seems like it should have turn signals and we have turn signal buttons here but the turn signals don't work we can't see any feedback anywhere that there's turn signals happening so that's another problem because we do like taking this on the road and when you're with cars you want to let them have a little heads up of what you're about to do we ended up resorting to hand signals just like riding a bike but i feel like something at this price point should have a brighter brake light and better method of, of doing turn signals. And speaking about this turn signal module, this cable wrap just looks really cheap. I like the cable wrap around this to the controller. This cable wrap that's at the top, it looks like they've just taken a cassette tape, unraveled it, and wrapped it around these cords. So not high quality, and they could have just easily just gotten the same cable wrap and kept it uniformed. And I know it's made by Extreme Bull, but it's still got the Bagode craftsmanship. And what I mean by that is little things like this. The horn were detached, and it should just have a really good high quality connector, but instead it looks like they just probably did it with wires and put some waterproof silicone on there. Not really smooth, but it just looks like a little kid put some silicone on there. When I ride this, I'm going about, I'm running errands. I like to be able to lock this and walk away, go take care of what I need to do. The problem is, while I have a lot of areas is to put a nice lock on and I have a pretty good pretty sturdy and strong lock that I would feel safe doing so there's no way to put a code or to lock this or have a kind of a keyed start and so if someone wanted to even if it's locked they'd be able to sit on it they'd be able to turn it on play with the throttle and that could really mess it up if it's locked to something and someone's trying to ride it away so I wish there was some sort of keyed start or some sort of passcode but we love it. My wife loves it. My kids love it. That's all the more reason to put a passcode on it because I, I don't <laughs> want my younger kids mobbing around the neighborhood on this without my permission or supervision. The other thing too, there's no water resistance rating and I wouldn't feel comfortable riding this out in the rain just with the cables and the connections that are exposed that we can see here. So definitely a fun device. And Andrew, what did you say? This is one of your favorite? Oh, this is my favorite sit down rideable electric device. Over e-bikes, over any other sit down scooter, there's just something about this that makes it better than those. It's smoother. It's fast. It gets a lot of people smiling. All right, we're gonna keep riding the K6. And while we ride, let's talk about who we think should get this thing. Oh, these are excellent brakes. Easily the best stopping power that we've seen in scooters, e-bikes, and all the other sit-down devices we've tested and reviewed. The brakes are pretty darn good on this. All right, this is us in the future. We've already recorded the video, but as we've been riding it more and more, we've learned a couple things. We've talked about the display and how it's not very good, but we found a hack for that. You can get a piece of tint and actually put that tint over the display and the numbers will show up a lot clear. Uh, we don't have that tint, but we're just gonna use our tint from the visor. You can see the numbers so much clearer. Look at that. With each batch, they make little tweaks. And so depending on which batch your K6 comes from, it may or may not look exactly like this. And then the other thing that we've discovered just from using this is how the light looks like. 
It's such a narrow throw. Look how, look how small that throw is. This is a huge battery, so don't plan on running this down to zero and just a quick ride. This is gonna take you where you need to go, but when you do need to charge, it's, it's a slow charger. It only has one charge port. Andrew, who do you think should get this, the K6? For anybody who is a PV enthusiast and wants the most fun that you can have on an electric rideable device, I love this machine and you should check it out. And you want to relive Mario Kart in real life, you got to check out the K6. Thanks for watching you guys and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.